Hi everyone, so we are back with another problem in our NEET code 150 DSA question series. So today's problem is sliding window maximum. Again, a very famous, a very important question of sliding window approach. So make sure to be with me till the end of this video. And before that, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe my channel. It will really motivate me to create more such content for you. Right. And you can follow me on other platforms as well. The link is in the description itself. So let's get started with the problem statement now. The problem says you are given an array of integer nums. There is a sliding window of size k, which is moving from the very left of the array to the very right. You can only see the k numbers in the window. Each time the sliding window moves right y one position, you have to return the maximum sliding window. Let me help you in the understanding of the problem statement with the help of an example. So here we are having this nums array and k value is 3. There could be a possibility that there is some background noise from my end or I should say a kind of celebration from my end. So today as you know that today uh, is the Ram Mandir inauguration, right? So many of the people are celebrating today's day, right? So it's a celebration day today. So apologies for the same if you are hearing uh, some celebration sound from my end, right? So here you can see that we are having this nums array. What we have to return is that for each sliding window of size k, which is moving from the very left of the array to the very right, right, we have to return each time this window moves right at the right by one position, so return the max sliding window that will be formed. So here, if you will see, we will take all the elements and window size they have specified as three. So first, we will start from very left. The first window is that one three minus one. So out of these three, which is maximum three. Then window will slide by one, by one towards the right, right? That is what given in the question. So now our next window is going to be consisting of three minus one minus three, so which is maximum three. Now again we are going to slide by one. So this time we'll be having minus one, minus three, five, minus one, minus three, five, so which is maximum five. Again, we are going to the window is going to be slide towards right by one. So this time we are going to have minus three, five, three in the window, which is maximum five. Again, the same process of so 5, 3, 6, which is maximum 6, then 3, 3, 6, 7, which is maximum 7, right? So, what is, so this is, see, all these elements that is being returned in the array 3, 3, 5, 5, 6, 7, this would be our max sliding window. In example 2, here if you will see this one element is there, k is 1, so output would be 1, right? The constraints been mentioned. Now, uh, what should be the approach for solving this particular problem, right? So, if you will just think about it, the most basic approach is that we can form, like, take the initial point of a window. So, let's call it as i. And then in, take an inner loop where we are just considering the k elements of a window, right? So, it, it could be started like i equal to 0 and you know this outer loop will execute how many times one two this pair formed or here from here also you can see one two three four five six right and what is the length of the array if i if i'll ask you from here one two three four five six seven eight right so eight elements are there one two three four five six seven eight eight minus three what you will get eight minus three you will get 5, right? So, n minus k times you can see. Because see, how many window formed here? 1, 2, 3. So, loop will start from 0, right? So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? So, n minus k times our inner loop because that only the, uh, sorry, outer loop, that only the windows that is possible, right? And inner loop will be responsible for considering each k window. Right, where i is the starting point and with reference to that k elements within that. And within that k elements, just figure out which is the maximum one and just create a resultant array and just put that maximum element to your array. So this could be the one approach or the brute force approach that you can think of, right? Now, if talking about the time complexity for this approach, so what it would be? It would be n into k, right? n into k would be the time complexity of that approach. So now, can we do something better than that? Can we do something better than that? Can we solve this problem in a big of n? Right? Is it a possibility? Well, of course. So let's let's have a look on that approach, right? Let's have a look on that approach. 
So just to just again a quick recap of the previous uh, approach, the, the brute force approach that I was saying is that that see you are taking you are taking a i equal to zero, i less than equal to n minus k, i plus plus, right? And in a loop, in a loop, what you are going to do? You are going to consider each let's call it as a like each c j equal to zero and j less than so if what you are going to do is that you are going to consider each uh, k elements right each k elements that is being formed each k elements that is being formed and here you will be doing some sort of calculation regarding the maximum part so for example j equal to zero j less than three then so from here you find the maximum one which is nothing but three then i will be i will be i is going to be i is going to be what i is going to be this time one right so j equal to one and the loop will continue till till zero one two three one less than four right one less than four right so that's how that's how every window we are just exploring and we are just checking the maximum and we are just storing in a resultant array right? one approach so so overall talking about the time complexity so that would be an into k for this particular uh, for this particular approach approximately if i'm saying right so what better thing or better approach we can use for solving this particular problem well there is a data structure known as dq dq or doubly ended queue you can do the insertion deletion like you can do the insertion division from both ends right so this is doubly ended queue so what we'll be doing is that so see one thing is there for example just this is just a just a thought process to show that if, let's say we are on this element fine we are on this element so once you have seen an element which is greater than that of the previous one which you have seen so will you prefer keeping that the element which you have seen before and it is smaller obviously no right because now the potential candidate is this three because we want what maximum one the potential candidate is what three so obviously you will remove that so that's that's the sort of thing that we have to keep in mind and we have to format dq so one one so we will keep the index of that one in our dq zero zero or let me make in this way zero we have kept right then so again we you can check so what is the element is zero this is one and which is lesser than that of the current element which we are saying so just just remove it because it's not going to be a potential candidate so so now we have three three we, uh, okay we are maintaining we are putting the index right we are putting the index so we'll keep one one then we can we, we have seen we have seen this minus one of course no problem because see this is potential candidate will still remain the same which is at the top what we are trying to see that at the top try to keep the like keep the potential candidate so this is a smaller one so this obviously so what we are going to do is we are going to insert this at the end we are just going to put, put this what is the index two at the end then we have seen so now now you can see so you can see you can see here that i value is going to be three now and so i value is going to be three now which is greater than that of three so i mean we we have got the window we have got the window right we have got the window this window we have got the window so we can say what is the element which is at the top which is at the top this index right so element at the index one this is our first first maximum element just keep it in the resultant array right now we will move further so at the third index we do have minus three so again minus three is smaller than that of three right so again we can just just keep it just keep it so what is the index three we will we are going to keep then again uh, i value is going to be what so the i value is going to be incremented which is nothing but four so again we have got another window right we have got another window and what is the element at the top this is the potential this is the candidate this is the maximum candidate for which is nothing but nums of one what is that three so three 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 again we got three now now we have reached to four now we have reached to four so you can see you can see that this window is done this window is done now this element which is there at one this is no longer a part of our window because now our window is this minus one minus three five so so we, this is not a part of our window we we cannot consider it now right we have to remove it we have to remove it so you have to put a condition for that as well that the element you know if we are if we are move if we are moving ahead and the element this is not a part of our window just just remove it just remove it right and now you must be thinking that okay okay uh like 
how see how how you can put this condition like in, in terms of code if i am just talking about like how you can put this condition in, into your code so you can just you can just you can just simply check if the element which is at the top right which is at the top if it is less than that of with the element which is at the top so element which is at the top if it is less than that of so what is the element what is the element at the top one one or basically the index you can say so one is it it is not a part of the window so how how we can do the same because i is what now i is four and k is what now one so one less than equal to one see if it would be see every time when we are when we are in this range when we are this in this, for example this two will come here right so it will be a negative if we will three if we'll put three here three minus one three again that would be that would be zero so, so sorry, 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 so sorry. I'm, I'm just making you confused. Okay, okay. So for example, for example, what did we had a one? This is, this was already removed. One, two, three, right? So what, what we are, our thing is that this index should, should always be whatever is the top, whatever is the top should be less than that of less than or equal to that of. If it is less than or equal to that of i minus k. So the i is right now what four? Four minus three. So one is less than equal to four sorry one is less than equal to one the condition being satisfied remove it remove it remove it so again let's say if if you want to check for this one so two is there two is less than that of four minus three no right so it is it, it is a part of the window it is a part of the window right so if we means we if we are we don't have to consider the element which is not a part of the window right so you can put this condition in terms of code to remove the element that okay it is no, it is no longer a part of the window our window has our i has moved ahead this k elements we have considered we have considered right so now we are on this one so on fourth we have seen five on fourth we have seen five on fourth we have seen five so for so before that if you will see so what is the index at uh previous element at three what is the element minus so minus three is less than that of five the element which we have just seen so it is not a potential candidate remove it then again we have minus one not a potential candidate remove it so now the only element that will be there in the dq that is four that is that is four four indicates what index four would be there index four would be there so again if you will check uh i is what four, i is what i is what four 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 right and it is what it is greater than that of it is greater than that. See, again we got a again we got a new window. That's only I want to tell. See, again we got a new window, right? So what is the maximum element here? Again, the element which is at the front, which is nothing but an index four element. So five we are going to get. So a big window is going to be shifted now. So i is going to be plus plus. So we'll come to three. So three is obviously lesser than that of five. So we can just simply put it five fifth index. We can simply put it right. So again, we have got a new window minus three five three. We have got a new window, and which is the, uh, obviously the element at the top is the maximum, which is nothing but the element five. So we have we have kept five here. So that's how that's how we will proceed ahead. That's how we will do a try run. That's how we will proceed ahead, and we will get our complete resultant output that is three three five five six seven. Right, right. I hope this makes sense to you. If talking about the time complexity, so what would be the time complexity of this particular approach? See, so once only we are just going through. Uh, like we are just iterating through all our elements, right? And we are just, you know, removing and popping up the element. So approximately we can say that the time complexity is big of n and space complexity. So just tell me what would be the space complexity for this particular flow. Let me mention that would also be big of n, right? So not exactly I'm saying, but approximately that would be big of n, right? So let's have a look on the code for this particular approach. So here's the same thing that we discussed. So first, what we are doing is that if nums is null or k values less than equal to zero, so we are just simply returning an empty array, right? Otherwise, we have the length of the array uh, index that we are will be using to maintain the indexing in our resultant array. So this is our resultant array, and this is our dq. So for int i equal to zero, i less than n. So here we are checking that the if our q is not empty, and this is for handling that part where we are moving we are see we have to consider only the elements which are in the in our current window not before than that right so that's the case that i already explained right so we are handling that case if that is the scenario you have to simply pull you have to simply remove the element from the front right 
because that is a part of the, that is a contribution of the previous window and which we are not going to consider as of now and here what we are simply checking is that see we are maintaining the elements in a decreasing order so that highest one or the element having the you know uh, highest value you can say maximum value will be at the top right so if if the element which is at the end which is at the end if it is lesser than that of nums of i we are just popping it we are just popping it we are just removing it so q dot pole last and yes we are inserting the index of index i in our queue here we are checking see we have got our window so i greater than equal to k minus 1 means we have got our window so once you have got your window so we are going to put the element which is at the front which is at the front so which is at the front piece because see at the, the element at the front the index at the front will be denoting the element which is having the maximum value right so we are going to put this in our resultant array and at the end we are returning our resultant array right so yeah, this is it from my end. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to understand the approach. Just I would say do a dry run of the approach to get a better understanding about the same. Thank you so much everyone. Bye-bye.